Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, my beloved brethren and sistren, to the Tawahado Bible Study Podcast. Before I go into my normal spiel, my apologies for taking a week off. I've had quite the workload in my extra podcast world and uh, hope that you've been satiated and content so far with the 85 episodes in about a year of the Tawahado Bible Study. If you want to support this venture, head over to patreon.com slash Tawahado, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash T-E-W-A-H-I-D-O. You can also share the words of God that you hear read aloud and recited or the link to wherever it is that you found this. And indeed, you can subscribe wherever you are, YouTube, Transistor, Apple, Google, Spotify, and the many places that this may be that I don't even know the names of. So we are continuing our spiritual sword frontal assault on the imperial capital of Rome. We are in chapter four of the scroll of Romans. We'll begin with verses 1 to 12. Today we'll separate it just into two sections, 1 to 12 and then 13 to the end. So we'll begin with 1 to 12, and we are in the KJV. What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man, unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in, un- not in circumcision but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. So there's a lot going on here. First and foremost, as the reader and the hearer, you are invited to read Genesis or Barashit chapter 15 and Psalm 31 in the Greek text or Psalm 32 in the Hebrew Masoretic text. So this is the big idea here of justification or the declaration of righteousness, which is a huge theme of Romans that, of course, as we said, split Christendom, especially we can say the Anglo-Saxon tradition or the Protestant tradition of Christendom from the rest, which are the going west to east, the Catholics, the Greek Orthodox, the Afro-Asiatic Orthodox, and the Assyrian Church of the East, a.k.a the East Syriac. So we must understand that this idea, this justification or declaration of righteousness comes from God and not from us. And it is not rooted in our own power, but in the power of God. It has no root in outward religious observance, which is what is meant here by the word works. It has no root in boasting. Instead, it is your utmost and superlative faith and trust that gets you a declaration of righteousness. 
But in order for you to be declared righteous or justified or have this imputed upon you, you must be able to recognize or see with eyes that see that you are lawless and that you have been forgiven. Then there is this debate about the status of circumcision. Is it that the circumcision imbues righteousness or is it that there was an imbuing of righteousness prior to circumcision, which is why we have to read Genesis 15 and Psalm 32 slash 31. God declares Abraham righteous, period. Then there is a circumcision, which is an insignia or a seal, a marker of, a confirmation of the righteousness which has already been declared. So without getting too confused between these two groups of circumcision and uncircumcision and giving an undue look at the genitalia of various people, what we can understand is that there are two groups of humanity, Jew and Gentile, circumcised and uncircumcised, and that the declaration of righteousness or justification, which can only be done by God, is for both groups, that is to say the totality of humankind, all of the children of Adam and Eve. And that is God's plan. Verses 13 to the end. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, through the teaching, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the teaching be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect, because the teaching worketh wrath. For where no teaching is, there is no transgression. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace, to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed not to that only which is of the teaching, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Here, I, I'm glad that the KJV uses the word seed. Obviously, I replaced the word law here with teaching because the Greek nomos is referring to the Hebrew Torah, which means teaching or instruction. So I took that liberty. But seed here is excellent. The Greek is sperma, and the Hebrew is zer or zer, as we say in Amharic and Giz as well. And the seed is often translated as descendants or offspring. So the seed or the offspring, the descendants, the children or the children of children are offered an inheritance. They are considered heirs via trust, not via the teaching 
which involved outward religious observances as mandatory dietary laws, the observing of Sabbaths and other holidays, both high and low, and other purity rituals. God is here the God of counterintuitivity, at least when it comes from the human perspective. He makes the dead alive. He makes those that are not into those that are, into the verb to be. His capability, his ability, his potency, his power is to make good out of a bad situation, which shows that he has total manipulation, total control over everything in space and time, everything encompassed in the heavens and the earth. Abraham and Sarah were dealing not with barrenness on one side and Edie on the other side, but a double barrenness, double oldness, double death, lack of hope. And yet, God was able to make Isaac out of them through the promise of his word. And Genesis, or Barashit, which of course chapters 15 and 17, as I've mentioned, we're invited to read when we read Romans 4, is not written for Abraham alone, but for our sake, for us, for you and I. And he closes by connecting Genesis, or Barashit, to the Lord Jesus and his resurrection from the dead, saying the same way in which there was justification or a declaration of righteousness for Abraham that precedes the circumcision based on his superlative trust of God. Your trusting in the resurrection of Jesus Christ and responding to it in a worthwhile manner, in a manner that matches your duty, ends up in a declaration of righteousness or justification for you. So trust in him and do your duty for the sake of the resurrection. In fact, I like the Coptic tradition. They name some parishes holy resurrection. In Ge'ez, it would be Tinsai Kedist as we see in our liturgical rubric, glory to God for all things.